Kyle here from allmeadreviews.blogspot.com. Uh, gonna do another Kevin Gilbert video. How many I'm gonna do this week? I might. Today's Tuesday, uh, January 11th. Today it's gonna be again. It's, I'm doing this like the Merlin ones, I guess. It's not that many albums, of course. So it's this is gonna be Kevin's. Really, what is in effect his only proper solo studio album while he was alive. 1995s. So I've seen it listed at 94, but it didn't, and like promos were sent out, but it didn't come out until 1995. Thud. Um, I should have brought up the actual release date, um, which I had it at one point. But, uh, you know, I don't have time for this. Hold on. Okay, so I found it. So, yeah, it, it was actually released uh, officially um, on. PRS, or PRA rather, records, on March 21st, uh, 1995, so, CD, of course, this didn't come out until a couple of years ago, I want to say it was like 2017, it was with it, but vinyl, of course, standard track list on the vinyl too, and then it does include a bonus disc, which... Honestly, I don't know. I've heard those versions. Got Cashmere, the studio version, of course, the w Waiting, the other version, and Joy Tone Acoustic. So, of course, the. I mean, I've got the cassettes. I'm not going to show those. I've shown those in a different video, in all my Kevin Gilbert collection videos, but the two deluxe editions that I've got, you know, super, you know extensive novels, you know, so something similar is believed to be in the works soon for The Shaming of the True, which is going to be like the ultimate, but anyway, so this is about Thud, so, um, I guess, you know, the thing is, when I first was introduced to Kevin or found out about him, I think one of the first songs, maybe the first songs I ever heard, I downloaded, I found like a mp3, I don't even remember where I found it, actually. Um, I know I found it, though, was for the song Shadow Self, which is the sixth track on here. Um, which I'll just get it out of the way with the whole thing with Shadow Self. From at least one, maybe two, or three different interviews slash accounts, it, the title was Late for Dinner. In fact, one of the promos I have, I think, actually says that. But, you know, and then one of the, the I remember Kevin mentioning... You know, he mentioned Shadow Self to him. I think it was considered his, like, favorite track on here. That's what I think it was. It was the final interview. It was, like, one of the, the great Kevin Gilbert tracks. And he said, you know, well, it's really, it was really called Late for Dinner. The thing I don't fully understand about Shadow Self and Late for Dinner is how it actually was originally titled that and where it came from. The, the word, the, the wording Shadow Self is mentioned in that song um, late for dinner, I'm not sure, it's like a, it's really like a, to me it's a song about a, someone, a guy who's battling his sort of conscious and his like, it's like a Jekyll Hyde kind of thing or his inner demons kind of thing, but, um, I don't know where late for dinner, I'm thinking maybe he was late for dinner, he's gonna get, you know, like he stood someone up, like a, on a date, like a woman, or just a friend or something like that. And I, I was just thinking about that. I was just revisiting Thud today for the umpteenth number time. And the song T for One sort of also seems, feels like a T, you're having tea versus dinner. But, you know, someone was there ha having tea only by themselves. I, I know there's other metaphors for T for One, but I, I've never really thought about those two songs being potentially loosely connected when, they, when he was writing, writing those. So... The thing about this record, about Thud, though, is that it's... To me, when I first heard it, you know, it definitely stood out from the other music I'd heard from him, which wasn't that much. I mean, largely it was Toy Matinee at that point I had heard, and I would heard The Shame of the True, I think. It was, like, stripped down, um, and a singer-songwriter record. That's, to me, the impression. I was like, why is there such a fuss about him, and why is there such a fuss about this record, specifically? Like, I get the, 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 the fuss about... Toy Matinee, and that's point. I mean, it's it's probably his, in some ways, his most lyrical or lyric-emphasized record. Um, but at the same time, you know, when you first hear it, as opposed to 
you've listened to it as much as I have and a lot of fans have. It's one of those records where the songs really have more going on in them than you first notice. And the more of the point I'm saying is while it sounds like a singer-songwriter and kind of a stripped strip down guy with an acoustic guitar just singing, it's really a lot more than that. Beyond Shadow Self, Shadow Self is probably the one track on here that is highly layered and resembles some of the, the layering he used to talk about when he was doing the stuff with Giraffe and T Toy Matinee. And he was trying to do something completely different where he wanted to do... He didn't want... He wanted something more honest and more organic sounding. However, again, other than Shadow Self, I mean, I'd say, like, a lot of these songs, while they do sound more acoustic, more stripped down, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of separate tracks. Just they're more subtle, they're more mixed lower at the right kind of level of mixing, where the vocals are more up front at points... Although there's a lot of vocal layering in this record. Um, now, you know, just saying favorites, I mean, Shadow Self is to me the prog of the prog songs on here, but goodness gracious, Joy Town have, have grown to be very huge favorites of me, lyrically and musically in a lot of ways. They both have chorus. Joy Town just, just, it just flows so well, and it's just all the different sort of, the images that it captures in like a fantasy land of different people you know, things that, you know, you wish were true, you wish things in society, different people, you wish social interaction, social relationship, inner encounters, you know, just different. It just, to me, it's like, based on the name, I know at the very end, live, he used to reference it, and maybe it was an alternate version, I think, acoustic version of it, that he, he goes into, you know, the um, Joy to the World by Three Dog Night, but... Um, it's like a fantasy song, and it, you know, it's an escape song. It's like, you know, this is the way the world should be if it were better. This is a utopia in some ways, you know. Um, you know, you're not singing the right No, No one can tell you you're not singing the right notes, you know. You know, people, you know, never say the things that are better left unsaid, you know. Just, this, there's a lot of just phrases and just messages in that. Um, when you give your love to me is fine. It's a nice opener, it's... You know, it's it's slightly political. A lot of this album is political. It's very lyrically political. But um, it's not, like, over-the-top politics. It's just it's subtle in, in sort of a very, um, I don't say persuasive, but just totally relatable way. You know, waiting, waiting, again, very political, but also still, again, musically it still works. There's a, a great flow to this record. I came to learn after sort of being taken aback by it. It's like, well, Kevin Gilbert does all these tracks and layers and different styles of music. And it's like, well, this album is sort of more homogenized, more one style. It isn't, it is, but it isn't in a way, but it flowed and it, you know, it's grown on me a lot. I mean, that's the biggest thing. Uh, some of the more de sort of melancholy, slightly depressing songs, I think of T for One to an extent, but Tears of the Tears of Audrey and, of course, the final track, Song for a Dead Friend, which, um, you know, Song for a Dead Friend, I'll just give some more, more images and stuff. That, to, to some, is his greatest track. It's his most depressing track. It's his most, like, you know, like, heartfelt track. I've kind of always had the same feeling that Here's your lyrics. That it, 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 I get that. I get why it may move people. I have never been blown away by it. Now, I mean, it's, I still find it sad, but it's a little bit like, like, was it Swimming Lessons from, from Porcupine Tree? Yeah, it's sad, but, you know, I'm actually more sad, but songs like, you know, like, um, Blank Page, you know, which is a B-side on Toy Matinee has been more, I can hear, feel the melancholy at a higher level on that. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's a sad song, it's, it is depressing, but it's not, it's not a song I can, I can gain as much from, it's just sort of like a meditative song, really, and it, it ends the album well, I'll give it that much. Now, I'll say this about, so the, the two tracks before that, All Fall Down, the second to last song, that to me, I was reminded again today, sort of, it's talking about, um, kind of uh, the end of the world and sort of let's have a party, but we're all going to die, basically, so we may as well just celebrate. Kind of like celebrating in a funeral in a way, which a lot of cultures do. Uh, some of my wife's friends or anything like that have, have had that happen. And then, of course, Shrug, Because of Me and You. I've always liked that song, and um, 
I've never fully, I never fully noticed the similarity because Kevin Gilbert, of course, has a history in his, you know, prolific but still obviously short career of taking songs and rearranging them and, you know, taking things from songs and others. And he did that a lot on here. This is no exception. That song, though, almost overtly is basically a remake, rearrangement of the giraffe song, Because of You. Now, of course, it's got Because of Me and You. I always knew about that. I saw it referenced. I, I noticed subtle parts on it. The music, of course, is a lot different. It's a lot slower. But I was listening to it again today and, and just kind of hit me over the head like, this really, you know, almost like 80% of the lyrics are lifted, or maybe 60%, whatever it is. More than half the lyrics are lifted from that song. So that really is like a Beca Because of You 1995, updated 1995. It is a, a Because of You slow version. You could call it, I mean, I don't remember how many different versions are in the box set, in this deluxe edition, you could call it a box set. Um, but I gotta believe there's others. Um, I should go back, maybe I'll do a separate video at some point after I'm done with this series, and just kind of go through some of those. What I need to do is I need to rip this this um, thing, because yes, there's a demo recorded in 1982 uh, on here, and then because of you, there's the late for dinner dark mix, yeah, see, I mean, a lot of the answers to some of my observations are in this book, but it's just a lot, a lot to go through, and it's been a number of years since I've actually looked through this. Um, yeah, of course, there's stuff like Until I Get Her Back that's on this and Miss Broadway. Um, that That's the thing is it just kind of hit me over the head, especially over the last year. I've been more, even more won over by Giraffe and the album pa The Power of Suggestion, which I'll talk about in another video, of course. And that song, I've always loved that song because of you. It's catchy, maybe the, one of the catchiest songs Giraffe and Kevin ever did, but... It's like it's like he reinvented the song, but he you can't escape the fact that he's using a lot of this literally the same lines. So it really is almost like because of you part two, because of you re it's like five different ways you could look at a reinvention of that song. Um, but you know, I mean, a lot of people still think of it as shrug. I don't know if now I'm going to. I think I'll probably just refer to it as well. It's the newer version, the updated version, the later version of because uh, uh, because of you, of course. His vocal style also is different because not only the arrangement, but his voice sounds different on the draft version versus on... Of course, there was also a remix draft version, but on the thud version. So, but uh, yeah, I mean, I guess there's not a lot more I can go into detail about this record. It, it's I can say that it probably is the record of his that has grown on me the most. But at the same time, when I'm going to rank these one through nine, it still kind of has its place. And it stands out because it's, you know, it, it can't be accused of, one thing I really like about it, it can't really be accused of sort of sounding too derivative of prog, 80s sounding. It doesn't have the, the 80s dated sound. It doesn't have, it, it stands out. It's very unique in that sense. A lot of his records do stand out. But um, but it kind of just, it, it flows well, but it's just there. It's that record. I don't think my feeling about it will ever change about whether it will be better or worse at this point because I've kind of, it, it, I've digested it enough over many years. You know, it's kind of those runs records where everyone always looked to it and mentioned it. I'm like, you know, I like Thud a lot. It's like, but it's not as good as some of these others. I didn't think it was some as good as some of these others. And it's like, you know, I'm appreciating more and more. And I've come to a point where I know it. I know it from front to back. You know, the only thing I don't know is I don't know all this extra stuff, which is just fan servicing, of course, for the real hardcores like myself and people on Facebook that, you know, I listen to this thing. I don't know how many times, four, five, six times. I did that video back in 2015, whenever this came out. I think it was 2015. And I just kind of just, you know, just missed it. Like, I know that big heart's on here, too. So, you know, thud, you know, if Kevin was really going off the deep end or, you know, later would have released this, it would have been like a thud box set. or It would have been a double album, probably. Of course, when he made thud, that was on the tails on and right after, like, the, the whole Sheryl Crow Tuesday Night Music Club experience. So a lot of the stuff on here could have been reflected on Tuesday Night Music Club. Of course, that's the holy grail in some ways for Kevin Gilbert is that we'd love to hear the, the, the Tuesday Night Music Club demos that a lot of the stuff that, you know, wasn't necessarily with Cheryl or with Cheryl. Cheryl wasn't even singing on some of them, but I don't know the odds of that ever happening. But anyway, so that's my, my spin on Thud. We're getting through this. That's number three. I got six more of these to do, um, which 
may vary in length, like a lot of these Kevin Gilbert video album videos. Uh, well, what's your take on Thud? Is it your favorite Kevin Gilbert album? Is it you know one you've never heard? It is on Spotify, thankfully, unlike some of his albums. Um, so you can check it out, uh, you know, just the, the regular version. Of course, Cashmere is also one part of it. I have the version with Cashmere. I'm not going to spend more time trying to dig that stuff out. But um, it was definitely a record that, I mean, Kevin worked and worked. I mean, like Tears of Audrey and T for One, especially Tears of Audrey, he talked about having just, he just labored over it and he never was fully happy. I mean, knowing him, if he was still alive, he probably would have remade at least half of these songs in different forms just like he did with Because of You just because that was sort of his habits eventually maybe those habits would eventually stop but he just did that and so you know this is just one version in the 1995 and he's like well I've made the album and it's I'm gonna have to live with it you know I'm not gonna try to beat a dead horse anymore any longer so beat it knock I'm not gonna thud I'm not gonna knock my head against the 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 table to make a thud anymore so but anyway, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.